But that's just a quick review of what you saw on Tuesday. Today we are going to start something new called mutations. And you've probably heard of mutant ninja turtles or other types of mutations being talked about in uh, movies and television shows. So a mutation is just a change. So the word mutation, you can write that down there if you want. A mutation is a change, something that is different from the way it's supposed to be. Another word for changed is altered. When DNA sequence is altered, that's a mutation. I want to take a look down here at what we see as a karyotype, which is going to um, be talked about <clears throat> a lot during this presentation. A karyotype is a picture of your chromosomes. And scientists, doctors can take all of the DNA out of one of your nuclei of your cells, and they can arrange it in this pattern to see if you have the right sequences of genes or the right uh, number of chromosomes in your DNA. If there's any change in one of these, you have a mutation. There are some things that can occur, that can happen, that can make mutations more likely to occur. And those are called mutagenic agents or mutagens. And a lot of them are in the environment. You can avoid them, most of them, by living a healthy and careful lifestyle. A lot of them are chemicals. Um, a lot of them is radiation. So chemicals. Don't inhale chemicals from pesticides that you might be spraying in the yard or paint that you're using. Um, try to always do that with as an open airflow so that you're not breathing in chemicals for a long period of time because they can cause the cells in your body to um, mutate. Some of the ones that people do deliberately, things like smoking, taking other kinds of drugs, alcohol, those are full of chemicals that are known to be mutagens, which is why people who do smoke often wind up with lung cancer. Radiation comes in a couple of forms, but the two that you are probably most familiar with are UV rays. Ultraviolet rays come from the sun, and as you know, people who spend a lot of time in the sun and don't protect their skin wind up sometimes with skin cancer, which is a disease caused by mutation of skin cells brought on by too much radiation from sunlight. That's why we always say wear sunscreen, stay in the shade, um, just take some safe precautions. The other type is X radiation or X rays, uh, which is what you get when you go to the dentist or the doctor to have them look at your bones or your teeth. Um, in small doses, x-rays will not cause major problems most of the time, but if you'll notice, whenever you go to get an x-ray, they do cover your body with a very heavy lead-lined blanket, and that protects the rest of your cells from being exposed to the x-rays. So the altered code, or the incorrect um, the change in the DNA, that will lead to an incorrect protein. So your DNA, and we'll talk more about this next year when you're in a living environment, your DNA is the code for how your body builds proteins, which is basically your whole body. And if the code is wrong, if the blueprint was wrong, if the recipe is wrong, you're going to wind up with a bad product. So it, those products would be diseases, which is like we said, if you expose yourself to chemicals, to radiation, or other harmful substances, you could change the code in your chromosomes, which could cause your body to make incorrect proteins, which would be a disease. So the mutations can come up in four different ways. We have something called a substitution. Substitution is simply when the wrong letter goes in the wrong place. So if your code is supposed to be A, T, and C, and somehow you wind up with A, T, and G, well, you substituted a G where a C should be, and that would be a wrong letter in the wrong place. So think of it like a substitute teacher. Right now, I am a substitute for Mrs. Gonzalez, so I am just taking her place. So if a A takes a place of a G or a C takes a place of a T, it's substituting. In this case, it's a really bad result. A deletion is kind of what you would think it is. Deleted. If something's deleted, it's taken out. So if there should be five or six, let's say six letters in a code, and one of them is removed, and now you only have five letters, it's missing a piece of information. And that gene will not be able to do its job, because instead of having A, C, G, G, C, A, it's only got five of those letters. And so it can't be correct. The opposite of a deletion would be a addition. Obviously, addition means one base was added to the sequence that shouldn't have been there. So instead of having maybe six letters in a sequence, you wind up with seven. An extra letter got stuck in there. 
that would be bad as well because now the whole sequence is wrong. And the last one is an inversion, and that is kind of like a double substitution. It's when two letters switch places with each other. So instead of having uh, an A where a C should be and a C where an A should be, they kind of flipped. So uh, those are the four ways that your nitrogenous bases can be out of order, resulting in a mutation. And I, and I do need to say, not all mutations are necessarily bad. There are cases where mutations actually provide a new trait, which is actually a benefit. Um, and in those cases, it, it would lead to the evolution of a stronger, healthier species. But in most cases, since your body is already designed to do what it's supposed to do, usually mutations wind up in things not being good. But there are rare cases where mutations are positive. And the last thing we want to talk about are the types of chromosomal mutations. That's where when you look at these chromosomes in this karyotype picture here, if there is an extra chromosome where there should only be two or where there's one missing, um, we call those non-disjunction or, or um, trisomies. And the other type is called a translocation where a piece of one winds up going to the other place where it shouldn't be. So we're going to really look at these chromosomal mutations in the next few slides. So how do mutations pass? How are they inherited? Well, there's only one way they can be inherited. And mutations are only inherited or passed on to the next generation by gametes. Your gametes are your sex cells. So for males, those would be your sperm cells. And for females, your gametes are your egg cells. So if you have a mutation, an extra piece of DNA, or missing a piece of DNA, or inverted DNA, if something's wrong on one of your sperm cells chromosomes or one of your eggs, well, if they're used to make a baby, then the baby would inherit that chromosomal problem or that genetic mutation. However, if the mutation occurs in your body cell, say a skin cell or a lung cell or a muscle cell, those do not get passed on to your children. You only make your offspring with your sex cells, with your sperm and egg. You don't use your skin cells to make a baby. So if you had skin cancer because you exposed your skin to too much radiation, and you develop skin cancer, that doesn't mean your children will develop it because you don't make your children with your skin. So uh, mutations in body cells will not pass on to your offspring, but they could affect the individual. Okay, so there are three types of trisomy chromosome mutations. Tri means three. Some refers to chromosome. It means there's three chromosomes. So one that many people are aware of is called Down syndrome. Down syndrome is probably the most common genetic mutation resulting from a chromosome or a um, trisomy chromosome. And that is when the individual, the baby, um, inherits three copies of a chromosome number 21. What, means, but what that would happen would be when the father has two copies of that gene in his sperm or the mother has two copies of it in her egg. If that chromosome is duplicated in one or the other, the child will inherit too many. It's a non-disjunction chromosome because the chromosomes failed to separate completely, meaning there was two of those chromosomes in the sperm cell or egg cell. Children born with Down syndrome would have physical and intellectual disabilities. Sometimes they would wind up with heart defects, learning difficulties, characteristic facial appearance, and a decreased muscle tone. Many of you may know someone or have someone in your family who was born with this disorder. It's not typically fatal. It, it might result in a lot of physical uh, problems and learning issues. But um, if you know someone with Down syndrome, you'll know that they can live a very happy and, and healthy life as well. Another disorder resulting from a, chrom a third copy of a chromosome is Edwards syndrome or trisomy 18. And instead of it being on the 21st pair of chromosomes, it's on the 18th. There's three copies. And people born with this disorder have severe intellectual disabilities, heart defects. They, ha they hold their hands clenched in a fist, typically. They have small heads, um, jaws and mouth. They're abnormal in their major organs, and it's much more life-threatening. Many people who inherit this die before birth or within the first few months. So there are very, very few people who live to be your age if they have inherited this really serious chromosomal disorder. And the last one we're going to look at today is called Patau syndrome. 
which is when the 13th pair of chromosomes is result is affected and someone has three copies of that chromosome and again these people have severe physical deformities mostly to the brain spinal cord face and the heart and other organs and, and these individuals would normally uh, die within hours or days of birth so they unlike down syndrome children patel syndrome children would not be able to live a productive and healthy life And then there are some other mutations that result from genes. One, like we talked about, was skin cancer, which we already talked about. Oh, let me go back. Skin cancer results often from UV radiation exposure to the sun. Tanning beds is another source of UV radiation that people subject themselves to that probably doesn't make a lot of sense, especially those of you who, like myself, have light skin. People with light skin have much less protection. But anyone, no matter how dark or light your skin is, can get skin cancer from exposure to UV radiation. So the skin cells are damaged by um, the DNA being mutated and it misspells the genetic code causing your skin cells to do the wrong job making cancer. It does not get inherited. It only affects the individual. Another one is sickle cell anemia and this is inherited. It's a gene mutation that gets passed on through the sex cells to the offspring and it's where the blood cells are shaped as sickles. And if you look up here to the pictures, these are normal red blood cells, healthy, carry lots of oxygen, keep you alive and healthy. These are sickle blood cells, sickle red blood cells. They're not formed in a nice plump donut. They don't flow through your veins comfortably, and they kind of jam up and cause clots. A person born with this is going to have a lot of pain because their blood doesn't flow correctly through their veins, and they have frequent problems and delayed growth. Lots of great research now is letting people who are born with this disease survive, but if anyone has sickle cell anemia and they do have offspring, since it is associated with their sperm and egg cells, it does get passed on. All right, so the rest of this we're going to talk about karyotyping. And here is a typical karyotype, okay? You have 23 pairs, and this is a nice illustration for having them numbered. 23 pairs of chromosomes. The first 22, as we said in a previous slide, are autosomes. And the last pair labeled here as X, are the sex chromosomes. Now, the sex chromosomes will be identical if it's a female. They're not identical, but they'll be similar in size and shape. So a woman or a girl would be born with two of these X chromosomes. We're going to see in another slide that boys only get one, and they have another chromosome called a Y, which is much shorter than the X. And if, look, if scientists and doctors look at the chromosomes in a karyotype like this, they can just diagnose a disorder that a person may have. So here's the normal female in a typical picture. Again, 23 pairs of chromosomes, and the last pair here is showing you that she has two X's and no Y's, so it's not a boy. Only a boy has a Y. Think of the word boy, ends in the word Y. Girl doesn't have Y, so it's going to have no Y. But if you look at it, each pair has two similarly sized and shaped chromosomes. There are no extras and there's nothing missing. This would be a typical healthy human female. Now, um, one thing to note is that within each pair of chromosomes, if you look at 16, they look exactly the same. They're not because this might be the gene for blue eyes. This might be the gene from, for brown eyes. Maybe mom had blue eyes and she gave you a blue eye gene Dad had brown eyes and he gave you a brown eye gene. This is where dominance and recessive comes into play. Here's the normal male. Again, 23 pairs for a total of 46. There are two at each place. No problems here. And instead of having two X's like the girl had, it's a boy. Boy ends in Y. So there's going to be a Y chromosome. This is a male. And here would be a male who inherited the disorder of Down syndrome. If you go through, you'll see there are two chromosomes for every pair until you get all the way down here to pair 21, there's an extra. When this child was created with a sperm or an egg cell, one of those two sex cells, one of the gametes had two number 21s. The other one only had one, which was typical, but somehow this child wound up with three 21s. It is a boy because there's an X and a Y, but the boy has a gen genetic disorder of Down syndrome, and this would be all of the cells in this baby's body.
so it would not be something you could fix because you can't change the cell. Out of the trillions of cells, you can't go and take a chromosome out of every cell and make it go away. All right, we're going to go um, into this next slide next week, but I just want you to recognize um, these karyotypes. We, uh, if it was a person with Edwards syndrome, there would be three at 18. And if it was a person with Patel syndrome, there would be three at 13. Um, and then if there was anything missing, those would be other genetic disorders. You'll need that information to do the assignment at the end of the uh, lesson today. All right, guys, if you have any questions, make sure you message me or email me. I'd be happy to go over this with you again. Otherwise, good luck with the assignment, and I'll check in with you guys again next week.